Kurt Pilon and also Patrick Allen. Elon winning the Peoria Open, Patrick Allen, of course, the Greater Detroit Open. And here is Richie Allen, the youngster out of Tulsa. And here's the thing to watch for, I think, in this match. You know, Richie Allen's trying to go straighter. And when you try to go straighter, you got to take a little bit of the hand action out of the bottom of the swing. Every now and then, Richie will grab up or snap on one. You know, his A game is really getting on it and really, you know, making the, the ball hook a lot. And when you're throwing straight, when you snap on it, the ball's going to break loose in the back end. Yeah, you talk about tempo. These two guys are completely different as far as tempo is concerned, something you and Brian Voss just spoke about. Yeah, I think the big difference is uh, Rick Steelsmith gets the ball into the swing a little bit later than Richie Allen. So his first couple steps are going to be a little bit slower. And tempo and timing, I think, kind of go hand in hand. And it's all set up by when the ball is placed into the swing. The feet always try to match what the swing and the ball are doing. Uh, he has had such great ball reaction since the very first ball thrown today. Well, you, we, we talked to Rick earlier this week about his ball reaction. He said he was fishing, doing lots of different things. But watch this timing here. All right, now stop the tape. See how the ball gets back behind him in his third step? And it's all relative to the height of his backswing. Okay, go ahead and roll. Freeze. Now look where his hand is directly underneath the ball. That elbow to the inside, that's great power and leverage. Go ahead. Oh. Here's the pop. And he's got two in a row to open things up. You know, he talked about just not thinking about it. Getting too analytical was his problem the last couple of years. You know, trying to find the swing key, but it went the opposite way as far as his timing, which you were talking about. He's just getting up and throwing the ball today. Yeah, he got confused before too analytical. Now he's bowling on instinct. And the youngster not able to answer the challenge, leaving the seven. And you can really see the difference when Richie Allen gets the ball out of his hand a little bit cleaner. The ball's a little bit faster out of his hand, and the ball holds line. I love that one. That was a good shot. It normally would strike 90% of the time. Well, last year, Toledo played host to some exciting PBA action at the National Championship at Southwick Lanes, and this year should be no different as they play host to the PBA World Championship. With the first place finish worth $120,000, the richest in PBA history. Be sure to catch all the action February 25th through March the 3rd, and we'll have the televised finals on Sunday, March 3rd at 12.30. Once again, it's the World Championship. It used to be the National Championship. That didn't look like it was going to get there. You know, you talk about great strikes. You, i got to give kudos to, to somebody you're very fond of, Bob Brown, who bowled his, I believe, fourth 300 game last Tuesday, 62 years old. 62 years old, my junior bowling coach growing up, Bob Brown, Marilyn Brown. I call him mom and dad. They're this, the greatest people in the world. He taught me everything I knew growing up, and now, of course, I teach him. So, Bob, I'll take full <laughs> credit for that 300 game. I gave him a ball a couple weeks ago in Medford. He pulls 300 with it. <laughs> Looking for the 21 pin advantage, and he's got it. You know, Rick has been so solid on the left lane, now he's getting solid on the right lane. Well, he's making great shots. He has a real clear picture mentally of what he's trying to do with a bowling ball. And again, we said, you know, earlier in, the, in this first match, this guy is one break, one win away from really turning things around. And this could be, this would be a great, a great time to, uh, Get in the winner's circle, 40 grand, his biggest paycheck next to when he won the ABC Masters. Listen to his fingers pop at the release. Oh, he is on a roll. He's really got a good picture of what he's trying to do on both lanes. A little bit deeper on the left lane, going with that loft. Holding the ball on line. Four straight. Watch this ball get airborne. His hand is just so beautiful point of release it's underneath to the inside part of the ball going right up through the back of it and he needs to cut this 31 pin lead down to 21 with a strike and he does you know one thing you like about Richie Allen we saw it in Brett Wolf uh, in Reno we saw it last week with Tommy these guys don't back down they've got that bulldog mentality that Rick Steelsmith you're bowling well but I'm coming up right in your face he's not scared he's not scared <laughs> that, that boy not scared at all 
Now they can cut it to 11 with another strike. And these guys bowled all week long in a grueling format to get to make it to this point. You know, it's it's do or die. There's nothing to lose, man. You laid all out on the line. Oh, it, huh. Making really good it's shots. He needs to carry. None about it. Well, he has a tattoo on his neck that reads next. Says he keeps it motivated, singing that he's going to be the next great player. How tight that ball is to his ankle. That left arm up in the air for balance gets that right shoulder down. The left arm goes up. You know, it used to be the old, the old adage was don't drop your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. Well, that was back in the days when you had to throw the ball really straight and go up the boards. Now that in the days of the big hook ball, right. the, the tip now is... Drop your shoulder. <laughs> drop your shoulder Try, now. Don't be afraid to drop your shoulder. It might help. Get that right shoulder down. That helps you project the ball to the right. Well, he's just hugging the ball return. You can't get any closer unless he was inside of it. Looking to take a 32-pin lead with a strike. <laughs> Steel Smith just making awesome shots right now. Somebody better go get him some coffee to go with that sweet roll. <laughs> well, there's nothing Richie Allen can do. Perfect game so far. Once again, a $10,000 bonus if you bowl a perfect game on television. Rick is still a long way from that, but it's not a bad start. Five in a row. Well, it's a good start. The, trust me, the last thing on his mind right now is 300. Oh, yeah. Right now, it's filling, it's striking each and every time he gets up and keeping the pressure on Richie Allen. Well, you could see that ball was firm yeah. and fast out of his hand, but he gets the great break. Again, we talk about it. Doesn't leave the 10-pin right. with the two. Watch this ball. This is firm and hard. And he knows it. Once again, he has changed equipment, too. We mentioned it in his first match. And it is paying off today. Starts out with five in a row. Rick Steelsmith. Looking for that $40,000 first place check. He leads by 31 pins over Richie Allen. Still more bowling from Dallas in a moment. Our city average. That's he bowled with Rick Steelsmith, as a matter of fact. That's great. Bowled a 108, 117, and a 90. And that's he's two years old. Future star. I can't do that now. <laughs> Richie Allen. Okay, we saw him go in the pocket, but prior to this, Randy Peterson, he was hitting the pocket, pins weren't going down. Tony Reyes made a move. Should he have made a move? Well, you know, it worked for one game for Tony Reyes, but Richie Allen goes 10-pin in the second. I hear you. Double. I hear you. Leaves a 10-pin in the fifth and strikes in the sixth. He could easily have five bagger, and this match would be all, all tied. You know, the, the problem here is now you got to stay where you're at, keep hitting the pocket, will the pins down. Rick Steelsmith's playing a completely different angle. When his ball hits the pocket, it strikes. It's Grin and Barrett time. You got to Grin and Barrett. There he goes. He's found it. Well, he's, he's like I said, he's hitting it. It's not that he can't hit the pocket.